AMC stock is up about 7% at the time of recording this video with likely an even bigger rally to come. There actually is though good news today and some people think this upcoming earnings could be a turning point for AMC and the stock could start to do much better. Judging off of the move that we have seen heading into earnings on November 8th, I would argue that is probably the case. Now, what I'm seeing here suggests an even larger rally is to come. I'm not a fortune teller. I'm not a financial advisor. We've been very clear that $7, five cent level, I thought was a really good point to be going long. I still think this is a really good point or level in which you wanna be long. And I think a much larger bounce higher is ultimately coming so we have a lot to get into in a very short amount of time hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and source your comments questions or concerns down below in the comment section amc stock is up about seven percent at the time of recording this video so let's go ahead and jump straight into it you're up seven and a half percent if you look at the RSI, that's at 57.79. There's still, believe it or not, a lot of room to run on the RSI. And normally, once you hit you know, 30 or once you go oversold, you tend to bounce to that 70 line on the RSI. So that's probably what is going to happen. That's at least, in my opinion, going to give us room to rally into the, the high teens, if not even as high as this 100-day moving average at $23.85 per share. Now, some people believe earnings could be a game changer for AMC, and we'll get into that here in just a second. But the reason AMC stock is actually rising today by a lot, I mean, 7.5% is not a small day for AMC or for any other stock. It's Sinmark's third quarter earnings. So AMC stock climbs after rival Sinmark's third quarter earnings beat. Sinmark saw a record domestic box office in July. And it says, Sinmark had record domestic box office in July. The company said in a statement released before market open, the movie theater industry has benefited from the success of summer blockbusters Barbie and Oppenheimer, two movies that sparked an in internet phenomenon dubbed Barbenheimer that had people watching both films on the same day. Last week, IMAX reported third quarter results that beat analysts' top and bottom line estimates, boosted by Hollywood blockbusters and strength in China, Europe, and Southeast Asia. Uh, shares of in-theater advertising company National Sin Media Inc. rose 4.7% on Friday. The company reports third quarter results after market close on November 7th. Analysts surveyed by FactSet are looking for sales of $54 million and a loss of $0.14 cents per share. Now, currently for AMC, the estimate is about a loss of $0.32 cents per share. So on that EPS side, it's it looks like... A lot of people are expecting quite the loss for AMC. Revenue is expected at $1.35 billion. So if you be on either one of those things, that's probably going to be good news for AMC shareholders. Now, the street says how Q3 earnings could mark a turning point for AMC stock. Given AMC's proximity to oversold territory, its Q3 earnings report might serve as a catalyst for a potential reversal. Hmm. Analysts are expecting AMC's Q3 earnings to show a net loss of 44 cents per share and revenue growth of 27% compared to Q3 2022. The third quarter of 2023 is likely to be AMC's strongest quarter since the pandemic in terms of revenue, driven by the recovery of the movie theater industry thanks to hits such as Barbie, Oppenheimer, and The Sound of Freedom. With indicators that AMC stock is oversold, strong Q3 results could mark a turning point for the company company shares and wow it's even worse than i thought some people are expecting a net loss of 44 cents per share wall street is also projecting revenue of 1.23 billion reflecting 27 percent year over year growth 
I think it's pretty clear AMC is going to smash those numbers, and that could lead to a big rally in uh, AMC stock. Now, it says possibly AMC's strongest quarter since the pandemic. The third quarter of 2023 is poised to become the company's strongest quarter in terms of revenue since the beginning of the pandemic. Throughout this year, movie theater industry's recovery has been driven by blockbuster hits and the return of moviegoers. The industry has been able to report numbers that are increasingly approaching pre-pandemic pre-pandemic levels. For instance, in the third quarter, the domestic box office grossed approximately $2.64 billion. That figure exceeded last year's third quarter earnings by about $700 million and was $164 million below Q3 2019, the last pre-pandemic quarter. Leading the way was Barbie with $632.4 million in gross revenue, followed by Oppenheimer with $323.8 million and Sound of Freedom with $184 million. Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1, and Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny also performed well grossing 172.1 million and 174.4 million respectively so you're basically at the uh you know pre-pandemic numbers that you've seen for this period for 2019 you're off 160 so million but that's really not a big deal in the grand scope of things right especially considering we really didn't have that many big movies that went to theaters barbie Oppenheimer and and Oppenheimer's 322 million. That's not like a huge movie. I mean, Spider Man. Um, some movies we seen last year did over a billion dollars, right? So. Uh, that's that's kind of important to put into perspective. In addition, AMC managed to raise approximately $325 million in new equity, equity capital for its balance sheet through the sale of 40 million preferred shares, combined with the $435.3 million in cash and equivalents reported in the previous earnings season. AMC should now have a cash position of approximately $760 million. It's, it's worth noting that there are still 350 million shares available for future issuance. This could bring it even more funds to bolster AMC's liquidity. That's the unfortunate part is basically at any point you could be diluted on i would say judging on how amc stock has performed recently up 7.2 percent here on the day wall street is not really looking at amc uh diluting shareholders anytime soon usually wall street has a pretty good sense on when dilution is coming they, they, they they tend to like be you know more knowledge than us they, they tend to get the insight before we do so you want to watch for any weird kind of trading that starts with amc that is more negative than usual but we're definitely just not seeing that as of right now and i think amc really would want to get the share price into the 20s before they do actually start diluting again but that's just my personal opinion now let's take a look at the ortex data and then let's get into what happened today as far as the economic data so today you're seeing volume of 66.34 percent for the call side 33.66 percent for the put side hedge funds institutions putting on a couple bearish trades today three trades totaling four hundred and four thousand dollars with a positive order value of zero percent so, uh, you know, hedge funds, institutions, not that bullish today, uh, but we have seen a lot of bullishness as of recently. It, take the, these numbers with a big grain of salt. You do have short interest of free flow at 6.38%, $132.32 million worth of short positions, uh, 0.63 days to cover, 6, uh, 12.61 million shares that are currently um uh sold short is what it says uh shares out on loan 14.74 million cost to borrow 1.28 utilization of 32.48 percent and a short score of 50.45 out of 100 so not the strongest numbers but again i don't think they are accurate and then you do have your cost of our max at about six percent i don't think that's accurate as well especially now that amc stock is going higher your risk of being short now is even more than it you know maybe was before and cost of borrow fees are just not even reacting they're, they're they're not even moving okay so i don't think those numbers are correct in the slightest bit now let's take a look at the calendar and what happened today as far as the economic data so non-farm payrolls came in light not too light just right. Not farm payrolls came in at 150,000. You were expecting around 180,000. I, I was very clear about this. 150,000, uh, anything really above 100,000 would have been, you know, good because it wouldn't have been as strong. Um, 
but not quite like we're imminently heading into recession. 150,000 job ads, you're still adding around the historical normal range of job ads every month for the US going back like decades, right? 150,000 is is a solid number. It's not 30,000, right? 30,000, 50,000, that's where people start to say, hey, whoa, are we heading into a recession? That might not be a great thing for our markets. But 150,000, that's great. When you are expecting 180,000, the labor market is definitely slowing. The unemployment rate as well went up to 3.9%. It was stuck at about 3.8%. So you're breaking higher out of uh, or above that 3.8 range we've been in. Uh, not quite at, at, at 4%. If you start to get over 4%, it's not too bad until you get to like 4.2 or 4.3%. Then you're looking at, um, you know, people becoming more fearful over a recession. So that's kind of the data we got today. The services PMI did come in really good as well at 51.8. You were expecting 53. So that was definitely better than expectations as well. So basically across the board, kind of a Goldilocks scenario as far as the economic data. And that is what is helping to boost our markets today. And if you look at 10-year treasury yields, they're down. It looks like another 12 13 basis points on the day now at 4.54 percent so your yields are just plummeting just falling off of a cliff and this is also again helping to support your small cap stocks your stocks that are doing well today well that's exactly why okay um so there you have it if you look at the stonko tracker data today is friday that means it's the last day of no, the November 3rd expiration. Today is November 3rd. You do have calls in the money, about 38,000 calls out the money, 42,000 puts in the money, 1,000 and puts out the money at 46,000. So virtually no puts in the money, uh, 38,000 calls in the money. So that's great. And that's going to lead to even more buying throughout the rest of the day. I would imagine. Now next week you have 16,000 calls in the money, 20, almost 30,000 calls out the money uh, in the money puts at 512 out the money puts at 21,000. So really just from this point on, the bulls are winning here as far as the options are concerned. Um, there's, there's, I mean, there's so many more calls on the expirations than that puts. It's actually ridiculous. If you take a look here, uh, on screen, the put to call ratio continues to fall. It's now at 0 0.67, uh, really much different than what you've seen during the court proceeding at like 1.7, 1.8. You've totally flipped that. You're now down to where you were back in 2022 when people were bullish on AMC, when AMC stock would go through multi hundred percent rallies. You're back, you're back down there. So I do think it's really only a matter of time before AMC stock goes much higher from here, guys. So that is going to go ahead and do it for this video. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. You guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.